So is your homeschooler learning enough math? So uh, this is a, a pretty straightforward question, but the answers are going to vary. Matter of fact, the answer to this question is not so simple. Now, a lot of you might, uh, you know, immediately think about your son or daughter and say, well, you know, they've gotten good grades in math, so therefore they must be learning enough math. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is not the best approach to kind of assess whether, in fact, your uh, child is learning enough math, okay? So if you're just going uh, just by the grades that they're getting in any particular kind of program or online school that you uh, may be using, that's generally uh, not the best kind of assessment in terms of how well or uh, how much math they are, uh, in fact, learning. So I'm going to give you four um, areas that you should be looking into as a parent to kind of really determine whether, in fact, your child is learning enough math for their age and their grade level. Okay. So this is a particular kind of question that uh, I've had to kind of address through the years because um, a lot of uh, parents, uh, as a lot of them talk about homeschoolers here, will be homeschooling their child and their, their child is doing you know fantastic in a particular program. Then they move into maybe a, a college or some other type of school setting and then uh, immediately they are not doing well. Okay, so in other words, they were underprepared. So that's the whole point of this video is really um, giving you some tools that you can uh, use so you uh, can really kind of validate and make sure that the curriculum that you're using for your child for mathematics is rigorous enough to, uh, you know, really teach them enough math. Okay, so they're prepared not only for, uh, you know, after school, whether that be college or vocational school, but for life. Now, uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. Uh, I've been uh, teaching homeschoolers for the last 15 plus years. So if you're interested in my programs, uh, my full uh, course curriculums, I focus on middle and high school mathematics again. I'll leave the links to those uh, in the description of this video. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so again, this is all going to vary uh, in terms of you know, people's um, uh, perceptions and opinions on this because some parents might say, well, you know what, my child, you know, they're going to, you know, they really don't need that much math. You know, I'm not really, I don't want to push them too much uh, in one particular subject because, you know, uh, for X, Y, Z. And ultimately, you know, you know your child the best. Okay. So uh, I want you to kind of take these tips that I'm going to share with you just as kind of, um, you know, extra things that you can assess tools that you can use if you want to use them. But uh, again, I'm going to be talking about this from a lot of experience. I've been teaching mathematics for decades and working with homeschoolers for many, many years. And typically, these are the areas that, um, you know, when I'm uh, talking to parents, uh, homeschool parents, that they were not kind of aware of when their child was in a particular curriculum. And then they're like, wow, you know, my child is, uh, you know, dramatically underprepared for college, okay, and I, maybe that is really kind of the main point of this video is to make sure your child is ready, especially if they are college bound. But let's go ahead and take a look at um, some questions that you kind of uh, want to ask yourself about your child. So the first thing is, do they find their math work easy? Okay, now you might be saying, well, yeah, my child is great at math; they love math, you know, uh, and you know they're able to do it really easy. Well. That's typically not a good indication. Even uh, strong math students should not find all their math work easy. Okay, If your child is finding everything easy, that's kind of a red flag that the program that you're using is, uh, or whatever course they're using, is they're, they're, they're not being challenged enough. It's not the right curriculum or they're in the wrong course. Okay, uh, Even the best, best math students should not find all their math work easy, okay? So if you're like, wow, you know, they just love math uh, so well and everything comes so easy to them, that's generally a red flag, okay? Again, even for uh, the gifted students, you need to, uh, you know, every student, even those top students in terms of uh, the ones who just love mathematics, they should be challenged, right? Not overly challenged, but a good, um, you know, part of the work that they do should be challenging. If everything is easy, uh, again, that's almost a telltale sign that the curriculum that you're using is uh, not rigorous enough, i.e. they are not, your child will not be learning enough mathematics. All right, let's talk about the second point here. 
and that is how much time are the lessons? Now, let's suppose uh, you are using some video-based program, and I can tell you right now, this is a big issue uh, is, uh, you know, from my perspective. It's probably maybe the number one issue is there's a lot of video-based uh, programs out there, i.e. a teacher teaching a lesson, but the lessons are very short, okay? There's not enough video explanation, and that is not good. Now, if you think about, uh, let's say, a high school student, okay, of course, I've taught uh, public school and whatnot. If my, or when my um, uh, students came into my algebra course, they spent like one hour with me every day with under like full, you know, comprehensive, rigorous instruction. That's every day. So in my uh, tablet class math program, you know, my videos are very comprehensive. It's basically on par with what I was doing in the classroom. Now, what I see out there is a lot of um, uh, kind of uh, programs that will say, hey, you can learn math, you know, with the, you know, very quick, you know, just, you know, it doesn't have to be that rigorous. You can learn it really fast. Anything that promotes that kind of um, learning style or, hey, learn quick, learn fast, that is not going to be strong enough for your child. If they end up going to uh, a good college and they have to take calculus, they will not be able to, um, you know, kind of survive at that level, okay? Or even pre-calculus. These are very challenging math courses. You really need to get this right in middle school and uh, definitely in high school. So if um, your child's using a program, if first of all, if there are no lessons, if it's just like a quick, they're reading through something, that's, you know, for most students, of course, there's always exceptions. Most students, that's not the best thing, okay? You want to get, uh, have your child have access to a math teacher, okay? Someone with a math degree, someone who has actual experience teaching, okay? That's it's critical, okay? To teach high school mathematics uh, in the state that I taught in, uh, you needed to have a degree in math. Now, I, I have a, uh, not only a degree, I have a master's degree. I almost have two master's degree. But that's not what makes me a, a strong math teacher. It's all the years of experience actually teaching. So you want to connect your child uh, and have them get instruction from a qualified uh, math teacher. Okay. Now, of course, there's all kinds of video-based programs out there. But you need to ask yourself, who is the teacher? Just because someone's on the other end of a you know a video and they're talking or showing to have someone how to do math, you don't really know their qualifications. And program like mine, you know, I am the teacher. I do all the instruction. So you want to make sure who is teaching your child and how comprehensive uh, or how um, you know how much time is your child actually learning from uh, that teacher. Okay. So again. If you're using a video-based program and the videos are real short, quick little tutorials, tutorial videos are not the same as full kind of um, uh, lesson plan instructional videos. Okay, so you need to look at that. And if a child's, I would say anything, you know, they're spending anything like less than 10 minutes on lessons, that's way, way too um, short of a time period to really get the full kind of depth and scope of uh, particular topics, especially at the high school level, okay? I'm talking really like pre-algebra and beyond. Okay, so again, take a look at how much time your child is uh, learning or taking how much time they are spending actual, in actual, under actual instruction, all right? So that's kind of the point of number two. All right, so let's move on to this third point. So how long does it take them to do their homework? So this kind of goes in tandem with um, my third point. So if they're spending 10 uh, minutes here on the lesson and they're, uh, they go to their homework, their practice problems, and it maybe takes them 20 minutes uh, to do all that, maybe even 20 up to 30 minutes. So now you have a grand total of a half hour invested. If that's all they're spending doing their homework every day, that is you know, definitely a sign that they're not being challenged enough. Now, uh, there is the opposite of that, okay, where you know they're doing a one hour lesson, and spending two hours on homework, so that's too much. I would say, um, on average, you want to um, shoot for about an hour to an hour and a half per day. Okay, so like Monday through Friday, every day your, your uh, child should be um, uh, working on mathematics. And I would say most lessons should be somewhere on the order of say 20 to 30 minutes, and then you want to be spending you know, at least 30 to 45 minutes in homework. Okay. So, you know, a variety of practice problems, 
uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if they're doing everything, you know, uh, really quickly, that's for sure, you know, a sign. And you could, they could be doing well. They're like, oh, I love this program. It's great. You know, uh, thanks, Mom, you know, for or thanks, Dad, for picking this program for me. Why? Because it's easy for them. <laughs> they don't have to put in the work. So that's going to have major negative consequences later down the line when you start getting into more challenging uh, math classes. And by the way, too, um, if you are, um, you know, uh, picking a homeschool algebra program, just because a course is uh, uh, being you know, described as algebra, okay, one person's algebra one or one curriculum's algebra one could be totally different from another uh, uh, curriculum uh, that says algebra one, two different programs. They may cover the same topics, but the depth and, and, and how rigorous it's being taught can be night and day, all right? So you really need to um, do your, uh, your homework to make sure that your child's not going to start a program that's going to be too easy, right? If they're only working a half hour a day, uh, that is definitely another telltale sign that they are simply not going to be learning enough. All right, let's move on to this last point. There's some other things I could talk about, but we'll kind of make this video somewhat uh, a little bit uh, shorter. And the last thing is, what type of test do they take? Okay, so if they are taking some sort of online program and uh, most of the questions they take are multiple choice, okay, so, you know, they go online, they take a test, they have to select, you know, A, B, C, D, or maybe even they have to enter their answer into um, some sort of online form, right? Oh, so if the answer is 24, they have to type in 24 and enter. These type of tests are like, they're okay, okay? They're definitely not the best type of math test, okay? Your uh, child should be taking open-ended tests, all right? So in other words, uh, things like, you know, piece of paper and, you know, number one, solve this equation because, you know, writing out the, the steps, seeing how your child writes, you know, uh, are they modeling how a teacher is instructing them to do? This is really, really important. So don't get overly enamored by programs that have, you know, awesome, you know, fancy software gives you all, you know, all, all sorts of, you know, graphs and printouts and stuff like that. Oh, look at you know, my, your child's doing great on this, this, and this. I'm not saying these, um, and you know, th this format doesn't have value, okay? But it's definitely not as good as an open-ended test, right? So, uh, like a, a compare and contrast type of question, you know. Uh, Give me three different ways to solve a quadratic equation and, you know, what's the best type of way to solve this type of quadratic equation. See, that's a more critical thinking type of test. So, again, you know, if um, you're using, especially an online program, and, uh, you know, most of the questions, uh, exams, quizzes, or whatnot, are multiple choice or entering a number, that is not, uh, you know, a not a, the best um, test taking format. Okay. So these are four quick areas that you can kind of think about and, you know, uh, apply as you, um, you know, make your decisions to uh, choose a homeschool math program for your child. So for myself, okay, what I try to do is to try to get um, uh, young people ready for college level mathematics, even if they're not going to college. I want them to be ready for that because, you know, uh, you know, people change their mind. Okay, young people are like, I'm not going to college. The next thing you know, they're seniors in in high school, and they're like, you know what, I do now want to go to college. So my um, all my math courses or what I would classify as college prep, okay? And I have a long track record of getting a lot of students into top schools. And my philosophy is every single student can do well in mathematics. Even if your child has struggled, they can do well, but they got to put in the work and they got to be in a course of instruction that's going to be comprehensive and rigorous enough to really kind of build up their math skills one skill at a time. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in all your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.